Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you're doing fantastic. We are continuing our reading of the Tafsir. We're in Surah Al-Baqarah. We we're dealing with 101 through 103. We we're picking up on a point where he was leaving off about worshipping things other than Allah. Okay. So it was the one who fails to spend his wealth in obedience to Allah will spend it in obedience to Shaitan. So a good example of that is you don't give to charity you're gonna give to escorts you're gonna give to drug dealers you're gonna give it to the gambler you're gonna invest in a pyramid scheme the one who fails to show humility towards his lord will end up being humiliated by other people now this i was gonna say in the last video but it was like right at the point where the computer will freeze if it gets over 12 minutes um so i was very vain I was really arrogant, especially when my, like, it was, you know, you're 18, your skin is perfect, everything is perfect, just, I didn't really have any shame. And then I got Bell's palsy, which is a nerve damage in my face on one side, and my eye drooped down, my mouth went like that, it looks like you have a stroke after it. And, you know, that happened after some stressful period in my life, and I had to go get acupuncture. To Chinese acupuncture to heal it the best we could um, but when you went to school man people saw it people were like what the f happened to your face right it's like what you I had to tape my eye shut because I no longer had the ability to blink in that eye so it was very dangerous because you know doctor said you need to tape it shut the moisture has to stay there you know and then peeling the tape off the skin got really irritated and then when I would go in the sun, the light, because I couldn't blink my eye, it would cause so much pain. It was horrible, you know? So that's why I am getting even way better at making eye contact with people to where I don't even acknowledge their imperfections. And people really are responding well to that. I've been doing that for a while now. Because before when people look at you, they kind of scan you real quick. And then you can see them hone in on your imperfections and then you feel vulnerable and then there's like a power dynamic after you start a conversation like that. That's why, at least in, in California, that's why so many women do Botox. They don't want to have crow feet stuff. They don't want to have fine lines. They're obsessed with having like non-wrinkled skin to where the point where they look kind of freaky. And, uh, you know... They don't want to be humiliated but they're loving their vanity more than just accepting... The maker made it so you get old. Accept it, move on. Spend your time doing better things and trying to look hot all the time. You're not going to be the hottest chick in the room at 40 when there's people being born constantly. It's it's You cannot fight that. Let it go. You have to have another purpose to your life. So if you're not having God as your purpose, you're not really valuing your time and you're sort of just kind of getting obsessed with looks and being the hottest chick and only seeing yourself as something, you know, to be active in that world of the sex world, then, you know, you can definitely become really weird and start spending your money on, you know, things that could go towards a better cause. It's like, maybe instead of getting that $6,000 plastic surgery that you don't really exactly need because you're 40 years old, why not, you know, donate that to a better cause? But I understand people can spend their money how they want, right? I'm just saying that, you know, I've had experience with being vain and then getting humbled by other people. It's embarrassing and it hurts, but you grow stronger and then you become, you know, better at not caring so much. So it's actually a great benefit. I have, you know, a coworker who, well, in the past, he had terrible, very terrible skin, horrible skin poor bless his heart but I was able to just stare in his eyes and never would scan his face and that was good you know I didn't want to make that person like if somebody's overweight and their guts hanging out I won't look at their gut so you know like and some women you know they kind of squeeze their chest a lot of women a lot of women do that they kind of show everything and they kind of want to bait you to look but if you keep making eye contact with a straight face and you just don't acknowledge what's going on <laughs> so you can see the fluster in their face 
So, you know, you start to be humble, you start to care less about vanity and about this lust energy appeal that is very pervasive and it starts to not have any control over you and you start to have a better self-esteem, you start to feel so different and strong and fortified and just self-subsisting. It's very cool. So when he writes all that based on what the Quran is saying, right, it's very helpful and I can see where he's coming from and that just makes it more understandable and approachable. Another benefit to expanding our minds on the Quran, especially from my perspective where I didn't grow up within the culture, right? The one who fails to follow the truth will end up following falsehood. Thus the Jews followed what they used to read of the books of magic during the reign of Suleiman. Now I've heard about this, I don't know much about the whole thing of King Solomon, um, but it's a very important thing that people talk about theologically, right? They brought magic to people, the jinn, and claimed that Suleiman used to use it and achieved great power by means of it. But they were lying. So being, thinking, so what I'm getting is this, is that you can't use little devils for, for a great power, but I thought, but I thought that, I thought that the jinns did do some of the architecture that they had to obey him, right? That's, uh, hold on, let's see. Suleiman did not use magic. Rather, Allah declared him to be innocent of that. As he said, it was not Suleiman who disbelieved by learning magic, for he did not learn it. Okay, 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 I see, I see. So, commanding the jinns is different than utilizing a force known as magic. Right? A separate energy force of like... <laughs> having that ability, capability is different than saying, I guess, from my understanding, the jinns being willing to listen to you, but they're only doing it because Allah commanded them to do so. It's not because uh, Suleiman had that magic ability within him to control such elements as that. I, th I think that's what it is. The, the nuance uh, definition tit for tat is going on here, but you let me know because I know a lot of you know because you've studied too. Rather, the devils disbelieved by doing that. So the jinns, they showed that they didn't really believe in the rules of Allah because they gave knowledge that they were not supposed to and being naughty and taught men magic so as to misguide them and out of their eagerness to tempt the sons of Adam. So they're having a little bit of fun. Naughty jinns having some fun. Well, fun to them. You know what I mean. Of, hey, let's, you know, do some misguiding. It's like that kid with the magnifying glass who likes to burn the ants for fun, right? Just doing something to do it. Similarly, the Jews practiced that magic that had come down to the two angels who lived in Babylon, in the land of Iraq. Okay, so that's right, yeah, Babylon was in, wait a minute, in the land of Iraq, okay. So that's in a, where another theological differentiation, I guess, is that um, there were people who had this ability to do that. Now, here's the thing, so I guess we have to go in further. I think I wonder what you'd have to argue with an occultist about what's the difference between the Jews doing I think that's called the Kabbalah rituals versus the Satanists doing what they do because clearly what the groups are different and both claim to speak to other people I've known I took a class a Harvard class online of Judaism through its scriptures but it didn't go into the this element right it was you know there's so much in Judaism you have to study it's it's a very vast religion you have to really put a lot of effort into it to understand it um, but what I know of the occult that seems something very different their rituals are very different than what I think the Jews are doing so 
different entities serving different energy. So is it the same magic? And was this magic that Suleiman was using the same as what the Jews were using before Suleiman? And that is that magic well, what the cultists claim to use? Do you see what I'm saying here? I hope that makes sense. What do you think?